Hello everyone, you already know who it is, and those of you don't, I'm Dead Pines. I'm here to break down this week at Bungie for you as fast as humanly possible. Let's go. Starting off, Bungie recaps and shows us the mods they're going to be giving us next season. The only thing I'm really concerned about this list is that we're only going to have one source of anti-barriers, and it's going to be assault rifles. Other than that, I'm okay with unstoppable linear fusion and fusion overload bow, unstop pulse and unstop sidearm. Next up, Bungie does some fine tuning. They're removing the traction mod and making it as an accessibility option for controller players. Making the PvP environment for controller players a hell of a lot easier than it was before. Next up, the super regenerating exotics. Exotics such as the Shards of Galanor, Ursa Furiosa, Skull of a Dire Aramkara, Phoenix Protocol, and Storm Dancer's Brace will refund you at most 50% of your super energy. Storm Dancer's Brace is going to give you at most 50 depending on the number of kills. And Geomags, they're removing the sprint the top off the super perk from these exotics. Bungie doesn't want these exotics to be the PvP rulers anymore. Moving on, exotic retunes. Hunters, the Bombardiers. The bombs now have a secondary effect depending on your subclass. If it's Arc, you'll have a blinding effect. If it's Solar, you'll have a burn effect. If it's Stasis, you'll have slow. And if it's Void, you'll be suppressing enemies. But the suppression will not affect enemy guardians in their super. Graviton Forfeit. Increase the bonus to visibility duration. The melee regeneration speed now increases based on the number of enemies near you. And while you're invisible, your recovery is greatly increased and your weapon reloads a lot more quickly. Lucky Pants. Added the Intrinsic Hand Cannon Holster mod, more on this later. And when you ready a fully loaded hand cannon that deals kinetic damage or damage matching your subclass energy type, for a short time each hit against a combatant from that hand cannon increase the damage of the next shot. But this will not work with Hawk Moon. Bungie says they don't want people one-shotting raid boss using these legs. Titans. Precious Scars. These will now create a burst of healing and bonus recovery around you whenever you kill an enemy with a weapon that's damage type matches your subclass type. Icefall Mantles, remove the slower class ability recharge scaler. Warlocks, Variety's Brow, change the trigger when you get a weapon kill that matches your subclass energy type, increases your grenade damage bonus by 20% per stack. This is up from 10%. The Stag, grants damage reduction to allied guardians standing within your rift, 25% against combatants and 15% against other players. Promethean Spurs has an additional functionality now. While standing in a rift, solar weapon kills give you class ability energy. When your class ability energy is full, solar weapon kills consume that energy and spawns a combination of a healing and empowering rift at that target's location. Bungie plans to do more fine tuning in the future. Bungie does some more fine tuning and changes to finders, scavengers, and introduces a whole new mod called holsters. Starting off, ammo finders. Now have an increased chance to spawn ammo on kills with primary weapons, and a further increased chance to spawn with exotic primaries. Scavengers. Multiple copies of scavengers do not stack anymore. And the new mod type, holsters. This mod will gradually reload stowed weapons of that matching type over time. It works similar to reconstruction. Multiple copies of this holster mod of the same type will increase the rate of ammo being reloaded. Almost every weapon will be able to use this mod, except Ariana's Vow, Rocket Launchers, Breach Loaded Grenade Launchers, Bows, and that's it. Moving on, Warmind Cells. Base Warmind Cells. Reduce the radius of the explosive effect range of Warmind Cells. This is from 10 down to 6. Reduce damage of the explosion of Warmind Cells. Previously was 200 to 400, now it's 50 to 250. Global Reach. The mod's energy cost has been increased to 3 and reduces the amount of radius from 20 to 10. Cellular Suppression. Reduce the duration of the suppressing effect when using cellular suppression. Was 3 seconds, now it's 2 seconds. Wrath of Rasputin. Reduce bonus solar damage. Previously this was 100 to 200, now it's 25 to 100. Elemental Well Mods. Elemental armaments now have an increased chance to spawn on Elemental Well based on their tier of enemies defeated. The stronger the enemy, the higher chance you'll spawn a well. Font of Might. Base duration has been increased to 10 seconds. And increased the damage bonus provided from 10% to 25. And that's it for mod changes and fine tuning perks. Now we move on to Iron Banner. Bungie introduces two new weapons to the Iron Banner loophole. The Forge's Plead Pulse Rifle and the Peace Bound Sidearm. These will drop for vendor packages, bounties, and match game rewards, and the seasonal Iron Banner quest. And that's not all. Bungie introduces brand new armor that has a Viking-esque theme to it that'll be earned the exact same way. 
But this set of armor does something slightly different. When you wear a piece of the armor, it grants you a small chance to earn an enhancement prism at the end of an Iron Banner match, and each additional piece of armor will increase this chance, capping out at four total pieces of armor. And to finish off, here's your Prime Rewards you can get on August 24th. The Firework Exotic Emote, the Fastlane Exotic Ghost Shell, Vanishing Point Exotic Sparrow, and the Vorpile 8 Legendary Ship. And that's it for this week at Bungie. Hope you enjoyed that short little video. I always enjoy making them for you. And if you enjoy what I do, please like and subscribe to the channel. It inspires me to make more. I'll see you on the next one. Peace, and have a good one. Bye.